Yeah, it's time to empower, educate, and encourage your women to motivate you through whatever you've been going through. We can talk about it. We ain't passing no judgment. So don't be ashamed. It's all the same. Stay in your lane. Your lane. It's whatever your real life looks like. Stay in your lane. Come out the dark and don't be ashamed. Your lane. Let's have a conversation on what we face every day. Tune into your lane talk show. It makes us feel good just to know we're not alone. No more will we feel isolated and cast aside I want you to come out the dark Just don't be afraid of your heart So don't be ashamed, it's all the same Stay in your lane Your lane It's whatever your real life looks like Stay in your lane Come out the dark and don't be ashamed Your lane Let's have a conversation on what we face every day Talk show with Coach Trish Hannah. Hello, 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 and happy Sunday to you all. Welcome to your lane talk show with Coach Trish Hannah. I hope everyone's having a wonderful Sunday. Guess what? Last week, you know, we had asked for a single mother to call in or message me to, um, to you know, whether or not they had their supplies or their school uniforms for their child. And yes, we got a message. Someone came, um, our first messenger. I'm sorry for the others that, that tried the message afterwards, maybe next time. But we got a message and we had someone, um, they want a gift certificate, courtesy of Carrie's Fabric and Uniform Store. Three school shirts and three jumpers. Woohoo! And then, of course, our third caller that, that called in uh, last week in the show received a gift pack to start her clean skin journey clear skin journey courtesy of skin solutions day spa and salon woot woot listen i love it here on blessing boulevard i love the fact that we can actually be a blessing to other people and of course in return we'll we will automatically be blessed and so your lane show was created obviously to empower as i'm always saying we empower educate and encourage women of all ages and today we're going to be discussing cosmetic surgery now you know all about the press augmentation the liposuction nose reshaping eyelid surgery i say what in the world could you possibly do to your eyelid but guess what we have the doctor in the house who can tell me all about it the tummy tuck the facelift he is going to let us know the ins and outs now i know i didn't get a chance to make him do this promise but i can make, make him do his promise online or right here with us to say he's going to give us the truth the whole truth and nothing but the <laughs> truth all right i am so excited about this show because we want to know the scoop man because it ain't so often we have an opportunity how much time or when do we have an opportunity to sit down with not just a, a plastic surgeon but the best plastic surgeon in the bahamas when oh okay so Last week, I made a post on our live, um, Your Lane Life Coaching, and I asked a question. If you were given the opportunity to receive cosmetic surgery to remove or enhance a part of your body to feel more confident or comfortable with your parents, what would you have done? Now, you can go on to Your Lane Life Coaching Facebook page right now and look at the responses. Most of the responses were breast enhancement <laughs> and some were tummy tuck. Now, let me tell you, I ain't gonna lie. I can't judge you all. Now, I don't have no problem with my boobs. My boobs are cool. I love them. But this tummy of mine, let me tell you all, I had three kids due to C-section. I had cesareans. And you know that little flower but it's come out with a little extra skin? Yeah, that's me. All right? So... If I were given the opportunity, I think I would do the tummy tuck just because I've done the sit-ups. I've done the crunches, and it just don't seem to be working. And i tiny, so you can't have, you can't have a nice slim build and little belly hanging over it. It ain't work. Your Lane episode 17 is entitled, The Scoop on Cosmic... What's wrong with me today? The Scoop on Cosmetic... Surgery, I'm probably nervous because I have the best doctor in the country in my presence. It is brought to you by Johnson & Johnson, distributed by Lowe's Wholesale, Airborne Freight and Cargo Services, John Shoe Store and Accessories, Family Medicine Center, 
Skin Solutions Day Spa and Salon, and Carrie's Fabric and Uniform Store. You can find all you need for skin care like Neutrogena, Aveeno, and Clean and Clear, allergy, cold, and sinus meds such as Tylenol and Benadryl. Listerine mouthwash leaves your breath so fresh and clean. And let's not forget about our little ones. Johnson's Baby, Aveeno Baby, and Desidin has taken care of the precious ones for generations. Why stop now? There's lots more brands for everyone. Johnson & Johnson, something for you, something for me, and the entire family. All products can be found in Lowe's Pharmacies or your local retailer. My predictions of emotions today for this episode are 95% aha moments, 5% laughter, because my doctor, he, he seemed to be quite funny. So I know he can crack one little one or two little joke for us to laugh at. And 0% tear drops today. We won't have the tear drops like we had last week and the week before. So you ain't got to worry. Unless someone's triggered somewhere somehow. But no tear drops today. You can view us on Facebook on your Lane Life Coaching's page or Star 106 FM's Facebook page. Or you can listen to us on Channel 976 on cable. You can view the past shows on YouTube. Look up Coach Trishana. From there, you will view all of our rebroadcasts from the first to the last week's showing. Please like and subscribe. I am inviting my audience to share this post. Share it, share it, share it. Everyone and their Grammy want to know what's the scoop on cosmetic surgery. I want to know so bad, and I can't wait because we have with us in studio... Dr. Gregory Neal. <laughs> Dr. Gregory Neal from Bahamas Plastic Surgery. Dr. Neal is a plastic and reconstructive surgeon that has been practicing for. Oh, I've been doing this since 1996. There's from a lot of 1996. Before, yeah. There's oh, a lot my of things gosh. before, but 1996, yeah. I'm from 1996. Now, y'all, let's do the math. So, we in what, 2022, right? So oh, 2022. No, not, the math, not the math, not the math. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, 22 minus 1996. That's that ain't right. 2022, doc. I ain't good with math, you know. 20. We'll, we'll call it 26 years for now. Let's say I won't be accurate. 1996, exactly 26 years. 26 years. That means you're a veteran. You're a pro. You know how it go. You could teach somebody. Okay, let's go. Welcome, Dr. Neil. Thanks so much for joining us on your Lane Talk Show. Trish, thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. It's great. And guess what? I I am very grateful for your time. You're a busy man. So I could try to see if I could get as much out of you as I possibly can. All right. So, Doc, my first question is, what exactly do you do? I know they say plastic and reconstructive, so I want you to be more specific. And what are some of the services that you render at Bahamas Plastic Surgery? All right, Trish, it's, great. it's a great question. So um, plastic surgery is a very wide field, mm -hmm. wide field. It's divided into two parts. Um, you have the cosmetic surgery, which everybody thinks of mm -hmm. when you say plastic surgery. Mm -hmm. And when you say plastic, you automatically think, hmm, that's fake. It's plastic. Mm -hmm. uh, but plastic in plastic surgery comes from the Greek word plastikos, which means to mold. Mm. And that's what we are. We, we take things and we recreate form and re recreate function and mm -hmm. we fix things. You know, we're, we're the problem solvers in, mm -hmm. in surgery. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> further to that, I think I'd like to say also that we have three plastic surgeons in the Bahamas mm -hmm. who are trained, highly trained, very experienced, um, I, I'm speaking actually on behalf of the wider plastic surgery mm -hmm. community in mm -hmm. the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. And we're all great at different things. And I call on my colleagues frequently. So I'm, I'm glad you said I'm the best plastic surgeon. Listen, the truth I see is what that you're trying to, I see what you're doing, but that's okay, because that's how humble you are. The truth is that we're all good at different you're all things. Good. We're all okay. good at different so things. So I might be biased. <laughs> that's okay. That's what I'm, it. Don't blame him. Blame me. Blame your lane life coaching. I call him the best. And I'm not even going to tell you why, because I did do a little bit of, I did a little survey. I honestly did. But I'm not going to get into that. If they're all good, that's good. Kudos to you and your other colleagues. But 
yeah, I'll leave yeah, that there. So I won't get in trouble. They're really fantastic. And I'm it's, sure. It, we, we work as a team. As a team. Honest, yeah. That is on it. You're so so, um, so mm-hmm. the other side of plastic surgery that people often don't pay attention to mm-hmm. is the reconstructive side, mm-hmm. where you might um, fix a cleft lip. I don't know if you know what a mm-hmm. cleft yes, lip yes. is. Sometimes they call it a hair it. lip. Mm-hmm. And you recreate the muscles and the skin, and you make it look almost normal. Right. That's very challenging surgery. Um, but it's very rewarding because mm-hmm. you change somebody's life, mm-hmm. and you um, you you give them a tool that they didn't have before. Right. Um, also, working with cleft lip and palate, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes <clears throat> the palate, which is the roof of the mouth, is mm-hmm. not well formed, mm-hmm. and you cannot close air off from going into your nose. So your your speech always sounds nasal like this, oh. like always stuff coming up yeah. through your nose, yeah. and it's very hard to understand sometimes. And we'll go in and repair the palate in a way that the person can now speak. And and actually, it's funny, but a a two or three year old who gets their palate repaired Mm -hmm. doesn't really know how to use the tool that we gave them. Mm -hmm. And so they have to go into speech therapy now and learn how to speak all over again. again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a very interesting field. Um, We also do a lot of cancer reconstruction. Uh, in the last two days, I would say I saw breast reconstruction after mastectomy. Mm. We saw some um, flaps moving skin and soft tissue around to fill defects where you take the cancer out and you mm. have a space. Now you have to put something in. Mm. Um, today I was doing a breast lift mm-hmm. uh, for somebody whose breasts were just a little droopy. Mm-hmm. And we got them right back up to where God mm-hmm. intended for them to Lord, be. Let me put in my application. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we saw a couple of tummy tuck patients. Mm-hmm. We saw a couple of liposuction patients. We saw a breast augmentation patient. She came in for something else. Mm-hmm. But we took pictures because she had been about seven years out from her breast augmentation. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to uh, um, just document mm-hmm. that, you know, her breasts are still in great shape mm-hmm. seven years later. Mm-hmm. There's there's different techniques that you use for everything, you know. And guess and, what? Um, that would have been, that's actually one of my questions. My next question would have been, what is the most frequent or the, the most common reasons why women mm-hmm. come to see you All right. regarding uh, cosmetic surgery? Yeah, it it's mostly um, breast. Mm-hmm. Breast lift, breast reduction, breast augmentation. We do a lot of Botox and a mm-hmm. lot of injectable fillers. You know, Botox for the little fine lines and injectable fillers for what people used to call the parentheses right. at the side of the lip there. Right. Um, I like to do a lot of eyelid lifts and we do something called brow lift through endoscopic surgery, which is just a tiny keyhole surgery mm-hmm. to lift the eyebrows into the correct position so that instead of, you know, as you get older, you get a little skin laxity, that the brows can drop. And then you'll see some people actually paint the eyebrows into a high position oh, gee. Um, <laughs> because the actual eyebrow is a little bit too low. Right. Instead, what we do is we lift the eyebrow back to where it belongs and it rejuvenates the eyes, rejuvenates the upper face. Uh, we often combine it with a facelift and a neck lift. And, and interestingly, I had mm-hmm. a patient yesterday who really could have used a forehead lift, an eyelid lift, a facelift, and a neck lift. But many people don't have, have the time mm. to go through the surgery and the recovery. Mm-hmm. And so we have a lunchtime surgery that we have called... Um, called Ulthera. It's not really surgery, actually. It's just mm-hmm. a procedure to tighten skin. Mm-hmm. And it gives you a little lift. Not as great as a facelift, but pretty good. A little something. Yeah. So, so at what, what age bracket do you normally see those who come in with this lunchtime lift? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> That's what you call uh, we, it, lunch. We've, we've, we've done Ulthera mm-hmm. on people as young as 24. And we've done Ulthera on people in their 80s. Mm. And, you know, we recognize that you didn't spend one day developing all of this skin laxity and Mm -hmm. facial aging. Mm -hmm. So we recognize that you probably have to come back for multiple treatments. So we recommend at least three treatments with the Ulthera. Mm -hmm. um, And we find people get a significant improvement with that. And the great thing about it, you can keep coming back as many times as you want. Well, as many times as you you could afford. (laughs) Okay, come on, let's be real, sir. Let's be real. (laughs) So, um... And this is a question I want to use that you, you were like 26 years. So how, how has surgery evolved, let's say, from the 
first time you've started to now, as far as now, this is a women's talk show. So let's 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 refer to you know, as far as women are concerned, you see that that there are more women coming in now than they were than there were like twenty six years ago when you first started, or this was always a thing. <coughs> Awareness has has improved so much mm-hmm. all across worldwide. I find that um, that the Bahamian population is very sophisticated, mm-hmm. and I have learned so much from my patients. Mm-hmm. And I, I've had patients who come in and say, "Hey, doc, did you hear about this?" And I'm like, "No, I mm-hmm. didn't hear." Mm-hmm. And they say, "Look, look, it's going on here, 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 mm-hmm. here." And I'm like, "Wow." Okay, let's check it out. Mm-hmm. But you'll, you'll often find me, I won't be the first one to jump mm-hmm. and do a new procedure just because somebody said it's great. Right. I'm going to kind of look at the market first, go take the course, look at results, give it two, three years to pan out and see mm-hmm. what lasts and what doesn't. Mm-hmm. And that way I find I give my patients the best, um, the best procedures which are tried and true mm-hmm. and which is not just hype. You know, and uh, not everything new on the market Mm -hmm. is as fantastic as the hype says it is. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But the trend has definitely gone more towards less invasive surgery, Mm -hmm. um, more technical and more instruments required, but worth it because less invasive means quicker recovery. Yes, yes. The other thing I've noticed, ju- just in addition to the, the local awareness, which has driven many, many patients mm-hmm. to our doors, mm-hmm. is that um, we are finding out so much more how diet and healthy living helps you not only with recovery mm-hmm. after surgery, mm-hmm. but with um, with the preparation and making my surgery actually easier, easier. making my job easier. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So um, so we encourage patients to, to realize that plastic surgery is not a substitute for mm-hmm. healthy living, mm-hmm. and we encourage them to get their sleep and eat right mm-hmm. and, um, and build up to it. And, and you know, it's, you, ca- you can't um, compromise, 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 right. compromise, right. and then expect me to fix it. Right. I need you to be at your Because you're in Jesus. Uh, if, okay? Yeah, right. If, okay. if I came to surgery and I wasn't well prepared, um, you would say, hey, hey, hold on. Don't, don't do my surgery today. Yeah. Go get some rest. And then come back. Go get some sleep and mm-hmm. then come back. And if you come to your surgery and you're not well prepared, I'm going to say, hey, hey, hey. We, we, you're going to go come tune back. up. Reschedule. And then you're going to come back. Wow. So let's talk about these. Okay, so ble- breast implants was a thing 26 years ago, and was well, it common? Breast implants was always common. Mm-hmm. I can tell you that at one point, I was in New York City in a, in a general surgery residency, mm-hmm. and I, I rotated through the plastic surgery rotation as a part of that before mm-hmm. I got into full-fledged plastic surgery. That was in the early 90s. Mm-hmm. And our program got cited by the accreditation committee because we were doing too many breast augmentations. We were, we were servicing the entire 34th Avenue and um, Upper West Side, New York City, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and there was a great demand for breast implants. So we were doing them very frequently, and in fact, um, it, our program was very top-heavy mm-hmm. as it regards to doing breast implants. So even though we have a lot of experience, mm-hmm. it wasn't given the residents a rounded experience on the full scope of plastic surgery. Mm-hmm. And so we got cited for that. So we had to kind of say no to some of the breast pull implant back. patients. Mm-hmm. We had to pull back on mm-hmm. that and, and do some other stuff like, you know, like plastic surgeons do. And hand surgery was a big part of what we were missing out on because mm-hmm. um, we had the CV Star Hand Center there, which was a huge center for hand surgery. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we were doing very specialized surgery and microsurgery on the hand. And, um, you know, many of the residents were just spending all their time doing breast implants. So we had to pull back and round out our experience. Wow. And that, that, that was 26 um, years ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that, that kind of put me in a very good place mm-hmm. later on when I actually joined, joined a full plastic surgery program mm-hmm. because I already had some experience. hand experience yeah. and microsurgery experience and trauma experience and free flap experience. It was great. Mm. Wow. So with breast implants. We're going to talk about that and what's the difference between breast augmentation Mm -hmm. and breast implants. If you look in the dictionary, augmentation just means making something bigger or more. Mm -hmm. And so the only way to make breasts bigger 
is with breast implants. Mm-hmm. I say that in a very, very qualified way because you can put somebody's own fat into the breast. Right. And now we're talking about fat injection. Right. But um, fat injection into the breast is usually a multiple stage procedure Mm -hmm. where you put in small amounts multiple times. So you're bringing somebody back to the operating room three, four or five times. To, um, to put a little bit of fat each time. Mm-hmm. People may stay out there and think, oh, I have lots of fat. They could put it into my breast. Let's just go <laughs> do it. It's not like that. No. You, 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 you have to tailor the amount of fat that you put into any tissue, right. in, including what are you doing? It into the breast, into the face, into the buttocks for BBL, as you and I know. Mm-hmm. Imagine this. If you have a bed where you want to plant some corn, mm-hmm. okay, you have to put the right amount of corn into the bed so that each one will grow. Right. If you do a pile of corn in the middle of the bed, all of the corn is going to die and right. very little will grow. Right. If you put too much corn all over the bed, every third corn might grow, but two of them will waste. Yeah. You understand? Mm-hmm. Similarly, when you're going to put fat into a bed and you want it to take mm-hmm. and grow mm-hmm. and live, you have to put the right amount so that the bed can nourish it properly. Mm. And if you put too much all in one place, the fat just turns hard and dies. And so and so BBL is one of those. Um, I'm sure we're going to talk about it later, mm. but the, the Brazilian butt lift is one mm. of those procedures where it's a wonderful procedure mm-hmm. done correctly. But then people can mess up anything. And I'm sure you've heard. Oh, oh I've seen. Yeah, Not I'm heard, sure I've you've seen. heard. <laughs> that there, there have been problems with that. Yes. Because I don't know how, but people find a way to mess up just about yes. anything. Yes, and these, anyway, I'm not even going to, let's not go there. But I have seen some terrible work, terrible work, um, especially um, going, you know, abroad. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, hold on, what? Uh, she really paid for this, but you know, we ain't yeah. going there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All no, right, so no, with I mean, breast, uh-huh. Well, you know, it's important to talk about, Trish, because mm-hmm. to be honest, I get called a lot mm-hmm. for problems and mm. complications. You mean after they already done uh, butcher up this hair? Right. We, well, we don't like to use the B word. The but, no, but sorry. It's, it has too much negative connotation. Oh, we like positive you energy. You know, there's actually, that's good, but you know, there's actually a show that's a, that is called Butch. Butched, butched. Yeah, right, yeah. butched, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, we, we, um, we see some complications coming from various places. Mm-hmm. Uh, to me, when somebody comes to see me for the first time, I am going to take the time mm-hmm. to discuss the procedure and I'm going to make sure the picture that person has in their brain is the same picture I have in my brain. Right. Once I've created that expectation, I can meet or exceed that expectation. Right. If I don't take the time to create that expectation, I can never meet or exceed the expectation. Mm-hmm. And so that time that I spend with the patient, the first hour or two, is an investment. It's an investment in a great result. Mm-hmm. And, and when a patient has a great result, they go and tell 50 people. Of course. That's, that's great for me. Yes. And, and my business is entirely built on word of mouth. Yes. You won't find me out there heavy on the internet and on yes. social media and stuff like that. Yes. And because you just don't need to. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the practice is built on word of mouth. Mm-hmm. And so, and so um, that experience for the patient is important to me. I find a lot of people go to foreign countries where they don't even yes. speak the language. Yes. And, um, and I'm, I, al- I also mean Miami. You know, there's <laughs> places in Miami you, you don't dare go unless you can speak Spanish. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of people find themselves in those places and their, langu- their communication is poor, the mm-hmm. expectations are not there, the patient preparation isn't there. And you, you go into significant surgery, uh, you know, people think tummy tuck is just a nip and a tuck mm-hmm. and you go back to work mm-hmm. the next day. Mm-hmm. Tummy tuck is big surgery. Mm. So, so you better be prepared for it. Um, so I feel like good communication is key mm-hmm. and you really need to um, talk to your doctor, get a feel for what's real, possible complications, how to avoid them. 
in my practice, I, I can't tell you that I've never had complications. Right. Every surgeon has com- had complications. Mm-hmm. My patients who come to me know what the complications are that mm-hmm. are possible. The risks. They know mm-hmm. how we're going to dodge mm-hmm. those bullets. They know that if they have a problem, everybody who has my, my mm-hmm. surgery by me has my cell phone number. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and I want to hear about it if you have a problem same time. Right. You had surgery by me, you have some pain three o'clock in the morning, I need you to call me three o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. I don't need you to wait till nine o'clock in the morning or message me on my phone and say, hey, I messaged you, you didn't respond. I need to hear about it. Because I believe you, you can jump on little things and fix them while they're little things. But right. if they come in, become big things, then it's too late. Right. So uh, we are blessed. See why I say he's a good doctor? Okay. <laughs> we're All blessed right. in this country because <laughs> guess what? Um, there, nobody is lost to follow up. Mm-hmm. If you live in out east or you live down Carmichael mm-hmm. and you have a problem and you can't get to me, it's a 15-minute ride for me to get to you. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're, we're kind of blessed in this country because wow. we, we have that kind of access. Yes, you understand? yes, yes. yes. Um, when I was in Virginia, people used to come to us from Tennessee. You know, it's a five-hour drive. Yes. And um, when they have a problem, then I'm like, okay, you have to come. I'm like, Doc, but that's a five-hour ride. And well, I'm like, well, okay, but you mm-hmm, still have to come. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's a risk. Um, so about breast implants, I have a question. Mm-hmm. One of the questions that, because um, I asked a few persons, you know, I obviously told them that I'm going to be interviewing you. One of the questions that they asked me to ask you was, is there a issue with does anyone have an issue with breastfeeding or complain about breastfeeding when having implants it's a good question Mm -hmm. there's lots of techniques to put in breast implants Mm -hmm. the technique that i preferentially use the one that i like to use that works best for me that's um like that lady who was seven years old and her breasts are still standing up very firm yeah um is a technique where we make a tiny cut mm-hmm. it's it's about just a little less than an inch underneath the arm and there's a muscle the breast muscle or pectoralis muscle mm-hmm. that has a space underneath it we slip the implant underneath that space so so there's no cuts in the breast there's no cuts around the nipple there's no scars on the breast mm-hmm. nothing and um, so we're not interfering with the breast tissue at all. Right. Therefore, the patient can be expected to breastfeed normally okay. with no scars, no nerves problem, you know. Um, there's other techniques to put implants in, and, um, and I've done all of them. Mm-hmm. But the one I spoke about is my preferred method. Mm-hmm. And when I need to use another method, then I do it. Uh, fully recognizing that there's a possibility of injury to a nerve Mm -hmm. or um, interfering with breastfeeding. Um, Low, low, but still need to discuss it, you know. Would someone come to you if they had a benign tissue in their breast or a lump in their breast? A lump in their breast? Yes. Because of my experience as a general surgeon before I was a plastic surgeon, Mm -hmm. I, I still occasionally see people who... Um, have a lump in their breast, which is benign, mm-hmm. and they want me to take care of it um, because there might be significant um, side stories. Right. Like uh, the, I took care of the patient's mom. She wants me to take care of her daughter. There's right. something special going on. Um, so, yeah, we see some of that. Um, by and large, however, for the, th- those things are considered the realm of general surgery. Right. So by and large, I tend to refer those back to the general right. surgeons. Right, let them do, yeah. Um, and, it, and because they, they do equally as good a job. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, um, and for lumps which are not benign, like cancer, mm-hmm. uh, yes, in, in general surgery, I used to do mastectomies. Nowadays, I tend to, to let the general surgeon do the mastectomy. Mm-hmm. And the main reason is because they are really good good at following up and organizing chemotherapy mm-hmm. and organizing radiation and doing stuff mm-hmm. which I may not have the time to do. I get it. I get it. Now, hip enlargement. Doc. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've seen some things. And guess what? I saw this thing. I saw this 
post on Facebook okay. where they're using these suction. I, I don't know the name mm. of it. I'm, I'm sure you probably do. Mm-hmm. They, they'll put the suction on the, 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 the hips, and then it's like a, I don't know. But obviously, it's it sucks up or increases the the size, and it's like a cup. Mm-hmm. You, you, you familiar with what I'm referring to? Uh, we we we've we've been through so many different phases and iterations of that because mm-hmm. there's a um, there was a thing called a Brava mm-hmm. cup that we used to use on people who we were gonna do breast fat injection on, mm-hmm. and what the cup did was suck the breast mm-hmm. and actually um, it would it would only increase the amount of fluid in the breast. Right. It wasn't real tissue. It was right. just sucking fluid up into the breast. Right. And so as the breast is enlarged, it creates little spaces or pockets between the, the breast glandular tissue mm-hmm. so that uh, we would then fill those spaces with, uh, with fat. Mm-hmm. Um, so it would make filling with fat a little bit easier. But the fluid that gets sucked up goes away in three days. Mm-hmm. So all of these suction devices are not really building new tissue mm. in the hip. They're, they're just sucking fluid in, mm. and the fluid goes away in a couple of days. So it's a very temporary wow, solution. Wow, it's just temporary. Why would you? Anyway. All right, let's take a break, Doc. And on the opposite side of the break, we'll talk about lip injections and the eyelid thing that I just don't understand why. I don't know. I, this is what you're here for, right? You want to inform <laughs> us, let us know what would be the reason to do eyelid surgery. You don't All need right? any. You're a gorgeous lady. You but, don't need any. Thank you. See, ooh, I feel so good. Let's take a break, everyone. Nikki, what that is you buying from Victoria's Secret? Girl, I sending over some things to Annie Myrtle and Abaco that she won't wear for Uncle Thomas' 90th birthday. Ooh, these nice, eh? But you and NASA, how she can get these? Well, Airborne Freight and Cargo Services is shipped to Abaco now. All you gotta do is put your name here, see here, and in brackets put Abaco and put in Airborne Freight address and they handle it from there. So how she can get it? Well, she can collect it right in the Lowe's Plaza on Don McKay Boulevard. Well, how does it gonna work, Nikki? Because Annie Myrtle can't. Here. That's small things to worry about. Why? Because Uncle Thomas can't see. Airborne Freight and Cargo Services. Now shipping in Abaco. Call 377-0450 for more details. Back to school time is here. And so are the smart styles and great prices at John. Great prices on brands like Clark, Sperry, Timberland, Fat Farm, and others you've grown to trust over the years. Both you and your child will be happy with their shoes each morning. Your backpack and lunch bag or box, John's has you covered. Socks and belts too. Teachers, we know your job can be hard on your feet, so make sure put them in something easy to work in by coming into John's. And help get yourself ready for the new school year. So to beat the crowd, come on in today to John's. And get set for school. Laboratory imaging tests are essential to your health. They tell your physician what's going on inside your body. The Family Medicine Center Laboratory enables your physician to diagnose and treat your medical condition. Results are available within 24 hours. Whether you need blood tests, x-ray, ECG, or ultrasound, we're here to help. We're located Rivington Center, Blake Road. Call 702-9310 for more details. Family Medicine Center, where our family takes care of yours. Ladies, you're due for a spa day. Skin Solutions Day Spa and Salon is a serene retreat that is designed to be a relaxation destination. They are committed to giving you personalized service in a clean, relaxing sanctuary, whether you spend one hour or the entire day. Their services include skin care and facials, waxing, manicures and pedicures, and massage services for individuals and couples. Skin Solutions Day Spa and Salon is located Cable Beach, just two doors west of Bahama. Visit their website at www www.skinsolutionsbahamas.net Carrie's Fabrics and Uniform Store wants to get you ready for back to school. Find ready-made uniforms and uniform fabrics for all schools in the Bahamas. Carrie's also sells skirts, blouses, shirts, jumpers, boys' shorts, and pants. You can even have your uniform skirts custom made. At Carrie's, also find school bags, school supplies, socks, and underwear. That's Carrie's Fabric and Uniform Store on Mackey Street. Call 393-0758. Welcome back. 
Now, before the break, we were talking to Dr. Neil about uh, these procedures that I've discovered a few on Facebook that, that had um, these hip enlargement that obviously um, you use some type of suction to increase the hips, right? So my question to you, Doc, because I don't know if you answered it, but uh, how is that is that healthy? I mean, are there any side effects by doing what they're doing? It's hard to say how much tissue damage you're causing. I think um, gentle suction shouldn't damage the tissue, mm-hmm. but you want to be careful because if you starve the tissue of oxygen by applying negative pressure to it for a prolonged period, mm-hmm you could get what's called like the equivalent of a pressure sore or a bed sore. Mm. So you don't want to starve the the skin and the soft tissue of blood supply by applying suction for a prolonged period. The, 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 what you're discussing sounds like so many other things where people apply suction to the skin and soft tissue to try and enlarge it. Mm-hmm. And all they're doing is pulling fluid from somewhere else, from some other part of the body. They're pulling pulling fluid into that area, Mm -hmm. and that's why it looks bigger or more puffy. It's a very temporary thing Mm -hmm. because the fluid eventually returns to wherever it came from. Mm. But in the meantime, you want to be careful about doing stuff like that because if you did it, I, I would imagine... If you did something like that for more than two hours, you'd really start to compromise your blood supply wow. and you might get some tissue breakdown. Wow. Because, you know, it's it, these trends now, people are just getting, going to whoever they want to go to to get things done just so that they could be. L- listen, I have to be real. This is a real show, Doc. I am enlightening and helping my ladies because we have this thing now that one store open up. We don't know their qualifications. We don't know their background. But we see that th- what they did, we saw a picture. Right. And because uh-huh. we saw a picture, all my <laughs> friend from, you know, my neighbor told me about it. I'm uh-huh. going to go and check it out and get it done myself. Yeah. And this is what actually, this is what I'm trying to um, stop or to, as much as I possibly can and bring awareness to things like this. So if you're going to get these things done, you have to go to professional. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Fully agree. And there's there's many things going on where somebody might have a product and um and they have it all over social media and um and somebody will go and try it and say, Yeah, it works great. Mm-hmm. Do- doesn't mean it's gonna work for, for you. you. Exactly. Be careful and and be really careful about the things that you put on your skin mm-hmm. and be even more careful about things that you put into your body. Seriously. Absolutely. Absolutely. Lip injections. <laughs> how's that how's that going how's that working out for it, our bohemians uh, um lips we, we see all kind of people who come in for lip injections mm-hmm. but if you have full lips you really don't need lip injections mm-hmm. the people who come in for lip injections are people with a you know with a little bit of facial mm-hmm. aging thin. sometimes the lips look a little bit thin mm-hmm. And the red part of the lip that we call the vermilion Mm -hmm. um, might not show much. But we use the lip injections to achieve more vermilion show. Of course, again, people have overdone everything. And when I do a lip injection on you, you, nobody should be able to tell. Right. The thing is, if you walk down the street and somebody said, oh, you had a lip injection, then I have not done my job. Absolutely. It should be subtle and it should be beautiful. Absolutely. So, Doc, why would somebody want to come to get the eyelid surgery oh, done? All right. Why are you laughing at uh, me? I just want to know. This is just me being curious. It, it's one of those things that happens as we age. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the skin on the upper lid becomes more and more redundant Mm. and you combine that with the brow coming down 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 Mm -hmm. after a while you have skin that's kind of sitting on your eyelashes and if you look at somebody who is elderly Mm -hmm. or has um, some sun damage or a little bit of facial aging you might notice some redundant skin above the eye, eye above the eyelashes when that skin starts to sit on your eyelashes it's very annoying becomes uncomfortable Mm. not only that but your visual field your ability to look up and out is now impaired and so we actually have the insurance companies cover some of this surgery when it's impacting your visual fields you understand i get it um if it's not that bad 
and it's not really impacting your visual fields and it's not really medically necessary, but you just don't like the way it looks, then the insurance companies will not pay for okay. it. Okay, But right. you, you might still need um, to have a little bit of the, the skin removed. And some people have fat behind the skin mm. that's in excess. And sometimes we can take a little bit of fat out. And we do it through very, very minimal access, means that the cuts are small mm -hmm. and um, or not at all. Sometimes we hide the cut on the inside, the red part, the mm -hmm. what we call the conjunctiva, mm -hmm. make a little nick there, and we can get everything done through that. So you come out of surgery not looking like you had any surgery, mm. but you're going to have some bruising and some swelling. You're going to have to lay low for a week or two, you know. Um, but th people have amazing results, and, and people feel so rejuvenated and they feel so much better in the public eye. So it's a worthwhile surgery to do. Okay. Cause I, I thought it was something um, regarding a trend or some fashion, but mm -hmm. it, now this is to help with their eyesight and um, et cetera. So obviously I'm not taking that light at all. So please forgive me, audience, if you have had that done, and it was, of course, for a medical reason. I was not trying to make fun of that. I just thought that, you know, like when things are trending, when you get your nose done and you get your lips, I thought it was one of the trends. Mm -hmm. So about nose... About nose, um, what do you call it? What do you call oh, that? Rhinoplasty. Yeah, no surgery. No, the no mm. surgery. What's the what's the medical term? Rhinoplasty. Rhinoplasty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you find that to be common for us here in the Bahamas as well? Rhinoplasty here in the Bahamas is not as common in the sense that you would ordinarily see in the United States. Many people in the United States are having what they call reduction rhinoplasty, mm -hmm. where the nose is too big or too long or too pointy. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it, the, the skin is often thin, and you, you go in and you reduce the bones, reduce the cartilage. Wh whatever you reduce it to, the skin will reduce and just cover it like a sheet. I, in the Bahamas, we have a different problem. Most, mm -hmm. of, most of our problem is that we don't have enough of something right. because the, the bridge of your nose might be a little bit too low. The tip might be not out enough or not prominent enough. And so instead of a reduction rhinoplasty in this country, we often have to do a rhinoplasty where you build new things into the nose mm -hmm. to give it the look that you're aiming for. And so um, we, we do them. We don't do them that frequently right. okay. because because um, people come in um, and they, they want it, but it's big surgery. You know, we're, we're taking cartilage from somebody else. It's not a lunchtime surgery. And I'll tell people, when you come to get your nose done, be prepared that your nose is not going to be completely free of swelling for up to three to six months. Oh, dear. <laughs> and so b because of the investment yes. in time, mm -hmm. sometimes people hold back on the surgery. Mm -hmm. But it's something that we do do, and the people who get it done, um, if you're willing to go through and invest the time, are very, very happy and satisfied. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's not a slam dunk, put it that way. So... Dr. Neil, and I don't know if you were able to answer this question because obviously um, we don't want to impact your business. But if you can be as transparent as you possibly can with this question, other than medical reasons, why do you think women want to come to you or come to surgeons to increase their breasts, their hips, and their lips? Okay. Are you able to answer that? All right. The, the other thing that I forgot to tell you before about the nose is that People often come to me for not cosmetic rhinoplasty. Right. They come to me for the rhinoplasty now that where you have, um, you got hit on your nose. Right. The septum is deviated. You can't breathe through one side. Um, a bone is depressed. The, the tip is off to the side. The mm -hmm. cartilages are out of whack. Mm -hmm. And so we, we do a lot of reconstructive rhinoplasty mm -hmm. like that. Okay. And, um, and it's actually the reconstructive rhinoplasty that's most challenging. The cosmetic ones are really not that challenging mm -hmm. compared to rebuilding a nose that was broken or badly um, disfigured, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So we, we do a lot of that reconstructive rhinoplasty. 
So you think you're able um, to have access, answer that question, or you want me to skip that one? No, no, no. Why? Why do you think that they want? Right. They. Why do you think that? Let's 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 go deep now. This is a deep question. Why do you think? Wow, a deep question. That, no, the same question, but I that want you to. That like a hard. No, question. it's the same question. I'm just gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna say it differently. Why do you think that women want to come to surgeons or go to surgeons for cosmetic? Surgery is like to increase the size of their breasts, their hips, their lips, mm -hmm. change their nose. Cosmetic now, not medical. Why do you think that that is the case? All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a story. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna answer your question. I'm mm -hmm. gonna tell you a story. Mm -hmm. I was taking care of the mother of a nurse. Mm -hmm. She had had her facelift maybe 15 years ago, and she was coming back to me for another facelift, okay? She had a lot of sun damage. I expected her facelift to last a little longer than 15 years. Mm -hmm. Well, she was going back at 15 because she noticed she still had maybe a little sagging, especially down underneath the neck area. Mm -hmm. um, she felt like she could use another facelift and she was happy with the first one. Mm -hmm. And so my resident was like, facelift? Why are you gonna have a facelift? And, and he was very vocal about it, mm -hmm. he said, he said, why would anybody want to have a facelift? Why can't you just accept the way you are, the way God made you? Mm -hmm. she, she looked around and she had a nice smile on her face and mm -hmm. she said, young man, you're looking at me and you're saying, this is the way God made me. Let me show you how God made me. And she took out a picture when she was 45 years old, mm -hmm. when she, she didn't have the, the lines here around the sides of the mouth. The, the marionette line down by the cheek yeah. where it was hanging down. The gobble, gobbly, gobbly mm -hmm, chin, mm -hmm. she didn't have that. The brows were in the right position. Um, they weren't hanging down and, and hooding her eyes. Mm -hmm. And she said, this is how God made me. Now, I don't expect to go back to where this is, but um, it would be nice to get a little rejuvenation. Mm -hmm. and, and the truth is, if she had not been healthy, doing well, taking care of herself, eating right, getting enough sleep, I would have thought twice about doing her surgery. Mm -hmm. Because I believe that all of this that we're doing is just a little icing on the cake. Mm. But you bake that cake at home with good ingredients. Right. You understand? Yes. And you come to me with a good cake, I'll put a little icing on it. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. You understand? I get it. That's the way we look at it. I got it. I love how you answered that, by the way. <laughs> You're smart. Um, no, but honestly, I love it. And that's a good way to look at it. But can I ask you then, have you ever had to counsel anyone where you, you now, you sense that that this lady may seem to have a little bit of, of, of a self-esteem self issue? It, it happens. It happens. And... Um, and we spend time with our patients. We get to know them very mm -hmm. well. And I'll tell you, the vast majority, people who come into our office become our friends. Right. And, and this is Nassau. Yeah. You see somebody in my office, you might see them at a party the next day. Their kids might go to school with your kids. Mm -hmm. You understand? They become real friends. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you'll find that um, people will be going through something and they might they might think, Cosmetic surgery might be the answer. Mm -hmm. Cosmetic surgery doesn't really change anything. Don't don't do it for anybody else. Right. Do it do it because you feel like you want it. Right. Um, and and when somebody has like something to gain from doing it, regarding like the way somebody else is going to look at them, usually they're disappointed. Wow. Usually they're disappointed because somebody who's looking at you. Really, they're not looking at you because the tip of your nose mm -hmm. is a certain way. That's just their opinion. And you really can't change people. You, you have to do things for yourself. Have you ever told anyone that? All the time. Wow. All the time. And, and honestly, people might come to me and, and they want a certain procedure. And I'll say, I'll say, look, if you want this for you, uh, me and you can talk. 
but it, it's become apparent to me that you, you're trying to achieve something else by having this surgery, and I do not recommend you have the surgery for that reason. So um, let's talk about it. Let me see you back. I'm going to carve out some more time for you. Bring some family members. Let's sit down and chat. And let me tell you something. Family members are my saving grace. <laughs> I love they having family difference. members. Mm-hmm. Family, family members mm-hmm. are my best <laughs> friends. Mm-hmm. Because, because let's face it, when you leave my office, I can't help you. Right. The, the mother or the sister, the brother, the church sister, the auntie who has taken an interest in you, who is with you, they are my eyes and ears and hands. Right. And I depend on them to give me feedback and let me know how you're doing. Mm-hmm. That's why people um, get my cell phone number. Mm-hmm. And, and actually... A lady called me last night after she had her surgery because everybody who gets surgery calls me in that afternoon mm-hmm. to check in with me and like make sure they're okay. Mm-hmm. And she was having a little pain, and I said, okay, you know, we give you two different kind of painkillers. One that's a regular painkiller, then we give you one super strong painkiller in case you need it. Right. Most of the patients come back and say, Doc, that strong, pil- that strong painkiller you gave me, I didn't use it because I didn't you didn't need, need it. it. Mm-hmm. A lot of them come back and say, Doc, both painkillers you gave me, I didn't need it and I didn't use it. Yeah. But this lady last night had some discomfort and I said, take some of the strong painkiller. Mm-hmm. And she called me back this morning, not her, her auntie called me back mm-hmm. this morning mm-hmm. to report and let me know that she was fine. Mm-hmm. Um, that kind of feedback is important to me. Mm-hmm. If I don't know you're fine, I'm going to lose sleep. Right. And my sleep is very important to Ooh, me. Oh, child, you got bad manners too. My gosh. See, listen, <sighs> Doc, you ain't even need to do no advertising. You're advertising yourself. You're, you, what you're saying, even if I didn't want to, if I wanted to get surgery, I'll come and find you. I have to. <laughs> I have to. Because that's awesome. That's one thing about people, especially of my color. My complexion, if we spend in our money, we, we will make sure we feel good mm-hmm. while we spend in our That's money. Important. You ain't just taking mm-hmm. out my money and then you just leave me hanging. I got to go look for you. Oh, yeah. yeah. It can't we, happen like we, that. We, we have realized in our office from the very beginning that it, no matter how good the, the product is or how good a surgeon you are, how great a surgeon you are, how skilled you are at this or that, it's still a service. Yes. You're still providing a service yes. and people need good service. You Absolutely. Know? Um. So I, I, met, I, I remember you saying something about the insurance companies. So we find now in the Bahamas that our insurance companies do not cover cosmetic surgery at all, other than if it's a medical reason. They will not cover something that is not medically necessary. Hmm. You know, they will not cover something that's not medically necessary. Um, there, are some, there are a couple plans floating around that people have that, will give you a disco- mm-hmm. discount on cosmetic surgery. Mm-hmm. But um, but there are no insurance companies that, companies that I know of mm-hmm. that will cover stuff that's not medically necessary. Do you deal with dental work as well? No. The, the extent of my, the extent of my, how close I come to dental work mm-hmm. is that because I'm a maxillofacial surgeon and right. I take care of broken bones in the face and mm-hmm. broken jaw and broken nose and broken cheekbone and broken eyeball socket. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people get into bad accidents for various reasons, and I'll go in and repair those through minimal access surgery as well. And so sometimes I, I'm, I'm taking care of a broken jaw. There's a loose tooth. I might have to pull it, or I might have to try and set it and rescue it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't do any restorative dental work or anything okay. like like that. It's just, um, it's just if it comes if it comes to me along with a facial fracture, then I'll right. deal with it. Right. And very often I call, I have multiple dentists on rapid dial that right. I say, hey, I have this tooth, what do I do with it? Yeah. <laughs> Can I save it? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what I mean? But no, I don't deal with any dental mm-hmm. stuff. What about like uh, hair implants? Hair implants is a really good procedure to do, mm-hmm. and I refer patients for hair implants. I don't we do that myself. We have someone here in the country that does no, that? No, I refer them to the States. Oh. I don't know of anyone here. If if somebody is listening here in the Bahamas and they do hair implants, please call me and let me know. Please call me too. You f- <laughs> you contact me because I would love to hear about you. I will refer patients to you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hair restoration is something that um, is equipment intensive and mm-hmm. time intensive. Mm-hmm. 
And you know, you can't do everything. Of course not. If you try and do everything, you're not going to do any of them well. Uh, so I try, I kind of stay in my lane. I confine myself to what I do well. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I, I refer out the rest. I, I refer things all day to people. You say you kind of what? Stay in your Stay what? in my lane. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Stay in your lane, Doc. Stay in your lane. And for our listeners, we have to stay in our lane as well. Dr. Neil, have you found, um, have you ever had any clients that were done, that you did procedures for, and then they came back to you and be like, "Uh, I don't think I want this anymore? It's it's extremely rare. I can't think of any right Mm -hmm. now because, because again, we invest so much time in the pre-op prep. And and very often we have family members involved from the very very start. Right, right. Uh, imagine this now: <clears throat> you're a grown adult female. Mm-hmm. You have your job; everything is going great. Mm-hmm. You have your family. You're in control of your life. You've been thinking about having breast implants for a long time. Mm-hmm. Finally, you. You have your life together and you have time and you can take the time off to go do it. Right. And you're healthy. So you come to me and say, Doc, I want to have breast implants. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you, what, what did your husband say? Mm-hmm. What, what did your boyfriend say? What did your significant other say? Mm-hmm. I don't care, man or woman. Mm-hmm. Who, what did they say? Mm-hmm. Why? Because in your head, you come to me and you say, you want breast implants. You're right. And you're not telling anybody. So you're going to turn up on the day of surgery and you're going to have your breast implants. Then I'm going to get a call that evening from your significant other. <laughs> right? Hey, what, what kind of surgery did you do? Mm-hmm. Uh, what I've done is I've lost the opportunity to get a lot of help. Right. Because if I build the significant other into the whole structure from Mm -hmm. the ground floor, Mm -hmm. then what I have is an assistant and an advocate. Right. I have somebody who will call me if that patient is misbehaving, drinking coffee at home. Right, and they're not supposed to be doing that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I have somebody who will call me and say, hey, these medications, I'm not quite sure which one was to take before, which one was to take after. Um, Can we stop this one? Do I need this one? I have somebody who is on the ball. Mm-hmm. You understand? And I cannot depend on the patient to be that person often because the patient might be groggy after right, surgery. Right. You and understand? Medication. So so you'll see me rope in family members and friends and relatives and mm-hmm. church sister and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, I'll get people involved. Um, not at the expense of patient confidentiality. Of course. Patient confidentiality is so paramount. Um, when when I have something like a resident working with me, mm-hmm. they already understand, you know, patient confidentiality because mm-hmm. they've been in the medical field. I still have them in and I make them do the course in our office. I listen, patient mm-hmm. confidentiality is important. Absolutely. I don't care if your cousin comes in here and you and me talk about it, you leave this office, you forgot you mm-hmm. saw your cousin in here. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. Because NASA is a small yes, place. Yes, so they like to the talk. the entire business is built on confidentiality. Absolutely. You know? And that's one of the reasons why people like, one of the many reasons why people like to go abroad to do things because they believe that, hey, if I do this, that's also small. They can talk, they can talk about how I got my hips enlarged. They can talk about my boobs, you know, we... I mean, I'm just glad to know that Bahamas plastic surgery keeps there. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, we confidentiality would, is paramount to them. Yeah, we would not be in business for long if mm-hmm. we if we were careless with confidentiality. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, we asked about, we spoke about um, the hips, we spoke about the breasts, we spoke about the eyelids, we spoke about the lips. What are the? Oh, there was a there was a, a, a listener last week that that spoke about her cheeks she said she needs to do something with her cheeks what we're going to do we're going to take a break and then when we come back from our break we're going to talk about these cheeks i'll try to look for the message and see what it is that she wants done okay we'll i'd talk love about to hear it, it. all right looking forward to hearing it stay tuned nikki what 
what that is you buying from Victoria's Secret? Girl, I sent an over some things to Annie Myrtle and Abaco said she won't wear for Uncle Thomas' 90th birthday. Ooh, these nice, eh? But you and NASA, how she can get these? Well, Airborne Freight and Cargo Services is shipped to Abaco now. All you gotta do is put your name here, see here, and in brackets put Abaco and put in Airborne Freight address and they handle it from there. So how she can get it? Well, she can collect it right in the Lowe's Plaza on Don McKay Boulevard. Well, how does it gonna work, Nikki? Because Annie Myrtle can't hear. That's small things to worry about. Why? Because Uncle Thomas can't see. Airborne Freight and Cargo Services. Now shipping in Abaco. Call 377-0450 for more details. Time is here, and so are the smart styles and great prices at John. Great prices on brands like Clark, Sperry, Timberland, Fat Farm, and others you've grown to trust over the years. Both you and your child will be happy with their shoes each morning. Your backpack and lunch bag or box, John's has you covered. Socks and belts, too. Teachers, we know your job can be hard on your feet, so make sure put them in something easy to work in by coming into John's and help get yourself ready for the new school year. So to beat the crowd, come on in today to John and get set for school. Laboratory imaging tests are essential to your health. They tell your physician what's going on inside your body. The Family Medicine Center Laboratory enables your physician to diagnose and treat your medical condition. Results are available within 24 hours. Whether you need blood tests, x-ray, ECG, or ultrasound, we're here to help. We're located Rivington Center, Blake Road. Call 702-9310 for more details. Family Medicine Center where our family takes care of yours. Ladies, you're due for a spa day. Skin Solutions Day Spa and Salon is a serene retreat that is designed to be a relaxation destination. They are committed to giving you personalized service in a clean, relaxing sanctuary, whether you spend one hour or the entire day. Their services include skin care and facials, waxing, manicures and pedicures, and massage services for individuals and couples. Skin Solutions Day Spa and Salon is located Cable Beach, just two doors west of Bahama. Visit their website at www www.skinsolutionsbahamas.net Carrie's Fabrics and Uniform Store wants to get you ready for back to school. Find ready-made uniforms and uniform fabrics for all schools in the Bahamas. Carrie's also sells skirts, blouses, shirts, jumpers, boys' shorts, and pants. You can even have your uniform skirts custom made. At Carrie's, also find school bags, school supplies, socks, and underwear. That's Carrie's Fabric and Uniform Store on Mackey Street. Call 393-0758. Welcome back. So before our break, we were asking Dr. Neil about these faces. We didn't talk about the cheeks. We didn't talk about the cheeks. So what can be done to get your cheeks nice and rosy and plump, um, <laughs> you know? Um, we, we do a lot of work on the cheeks mm -hmm. frequently many times a week um, and you know we we have a whole shelf of injectable fillers mm -hmm. different types of injectable fillers mm -hmm. that we use uh, frequently um, I don't want to I don't want to understate it but I, I don't want to overstate it either but mm -hmm. it's something that we do a lot of mm -hmm. we, we often see we are as part of facial aging like looking at you, you have gorgeous high cheekbones. Mm -hmm. the, the, the cheek fat is right on top of the bones and your facial proportions and the symmetry is just popping. Thank you, sir. As, as we age, sometimes um, with loss of skin elasticity and, um, and decreased tensile strength, you know, ultraviolet damage from the sun. Mm. By the way, I want to talk about sunblock oh, at some yes, point. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. We spoke about that last week. We had but, an esthetician on, on mm -hmm. our last week's show, and she could not stop talking about the importance if, of wearing yeah. sunscreen. Go right ahead, sir. Yeah, Go I'm right glad, ahead. I'm glad. If she took care of it, then I'm mm -hmm. okay with that. But somebody has to take That's care not, of it. Yeah, just, just, here, just talk about it a little bit needs. for those. So new, we may have new listeners today. Yeah, we, we see so much skin cancer in this country. Oh, wow. And it's all sun damage and and we have people who've been in the sun their whole life mm -hmm. so what we're trying to do is make the next generation the generation with no skin cancer all right and and in order to do that we have to tell daddy 
not only to tell young Jimmy to put sun, sunscreen on, but mm-hmm. daddy has to put it on as Himself, well. Right. Because if young Jimmy sees daddy putting it on, then young Jimmy will do it even when daddy is not around. Right, right. It's very important. Mm. Um, more and more, we're going towards the mineral sunscreens mm-hmm. because the, some of the chemicals in the old style sunscreens, we found that they're not reef friendly. Mm. They're not, they, they accumulate in the environment and mm-hmm. cause a couple of problems. So we don't need to have a detailed discussion about sunscreen mm-hmm. right now, but uh, I just want to throw it out there. I'm glad you a, did. It's an important point. Yes, I'm glad you did. So um, cheeks now is something that you, you'll find that the cheek fat will fall off of the cheekbone, and that actually is what creates that parentheses nasolabial line from the from the side of the nose going down to the side of the lip. Mm-hmm. Make that makes that line seem deeper because the fat that used to be on your cheek fell down, down and okay. created a groove. So what we'll do is we'll put injectable filler and um and plump that cheek back up mm-hmm. and plump that groove back up so that it doesn't look so prominent and it, it's it, not so much of a shadow where that is. And how long does that last? Injectable filler lasts um, anywhere from a year. And there's some that we have that lasts up to 18 months, but, but all of them go away eventually. Right. So if I have someone who has had injectable fillers, has had a great result, is happy with it, and is now asking about alternatives, your own fat. Mm. So we do a lot of that as well. um, Mm. It's more permanent. Yeah. Okay. The thing about fat is that because you're dealing with the human body, Mm -hmm. um, you you have a little bit of unpredictability. But when when you're going to plant corn, important is not only the quality of the corn you're going to plant; it's the quality of the bed you're going to plant it in. Yeah. So so that's one of the reasons you want injectable fillers. You need to be healthy. You can't be smoking. Right. You know, your you, your building blocks for collagen have to be on board. Your high quality protein. Mm. People think when I when I say high quality protein, they say okay, meat, fish, eggs, and milk. Mm-hmm. Not only meat, fish, eggs, and milk. High quality protein, especially plant based protein. Your spinaches and your kales and your broccolis. You know your green leafy vegetables, your beans. High quality protein that's anti inflammatory. Mm-hmm. It's very important to have that on board. And then you have your vitamin C and then you take a multivitamin without too much vitamin E in it, maybe less than thirty units of vitamin E so that you have your trace elements now, your copper, your magnesium, your zinc. You know? Those are the building blocks for good collagen. Right. Wow. Wow. So and so, we can use this for anyone that wants to go ahead with any of the procedures. With any procedure, even, yeah. even if you're getting, you know, you're getting your um, hernia repaired by the general surgeon. Mm-hmm. Take some multivitamins. Take some vitamin C. Um, stop eating so much inflammatory food, so much sugar, and so much gluten with flour, and you know, mm-hmm. um, get some sleep. You know, organize your sleep. Stop sleeping with the TV on or the radio on. Stop sleeping with mm-hmm. the cell phone blinging in your ears. Ooh, ooh. What's wrong with sleeping with the cell phone blinging in your ears? <laughs> 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 Not that I do it. I'm just, <laughs> let's talk about what does that do? What are, what are the risks for that? You have to understand the TV, um, you, you know, shows come and shows go. Right. The, this episode of 90210 is now rated top. Top rated uh, five years later, right. they take it off the ear. Why did they take it off the ear? Because nobody was watching it and mm-hmm. the ratings went down and the advertising money wasn't coming in. Right. So for you to keep a show on air or a news channel, Fox News or CNN, whatever, you have to keep people watching. Mm-hmm. The, there, are, there are psychologists who de- dedicate their whole life to figuring out what it takes to keep you watching and to keep you tuned into the TV. Yes. And there's sounds and lights and visual things and all kind of subliminal messages yes. on the TV mm-hmm. that keep you watching, that keep you interested. Mm-hmm. So if you're sleeping with the TV on, you're actually fighting that because people are trying to keep you awake and keep you watching. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to win. 
you're going to lose that fight. Yeah. So you might doze off, but you, you're not going to get deep, high-quality sleep. Mm. You understand? Wow. And it's the same thing with the cell phone. The light and the, the frequency of the light mm-hmm. and the messages and the constant stimulation, mm-hmm. you have to fight against that in order to get sleep. So, so put those things away. Turn off the lights. Make your room dark. Turn off all the noise. Go through your routine. Get some sleep. And sleep helps a lot with aging, right? <laughs> I mean, look, oh, yeah. I, I have a little bit of bags right here. Every time mm. I smile, you see it. I don't know no, if you, you can don't. see it. No, no it's a, it, the, what, what you have is not bags. No, what is what it? What you have is that is the muscle around your eye called mm-hmm. orbicularis mm-hmm. that actually is a very, very youthful defining feature. Oh. Yes. Look, listen, y'all, y'all cannot talk to me anytime <laughs> after this, okay? Because y'all here, Dr. Neil. Let's, let's talk about um, keloid skin. Do you find that a lot of people come to you? Yeah, we have a lot of keloids. Yeah, skin. yeah, yeah. Uh, keloids are so interesting. We we spent so much time so when when I did my um, when I did my residency in Virginia, mm-hmm. we had a huge lab that was was a, a lab that researched wound healing. Mm-hmm. As part of the research, keloids was one of the things that we studied. Mm-hmm. Over the years, we identified 127 different modulators, stuff that influence keloids growth. Wow. And we still don't have the answer Ooh. what, how what to prevent them. Right. Yeah. We, know that the, we know that the body, yeah, there's a definite genetic component. We know that the body doesn't get that signal to stop producing extra collagen. Right. And the collagen that it does produce is very disorganized. Um, I I have found, however, that people who decrease the amount of inflammatory foods that they consume do much better, even though they have a genetic predisposition mm. to get keloids. Mm. So we we have surgical treatment and we have injections, you know, with a corticosteroid, with combined it with some other things mm-hmm. that can really um, tone the keloid down. Mm-hmm. But as a rule, I would say, if you have keloids, try to avoid, or a family history of keloids, try to avoid getting your ears pierced and your nose pierced yeah. and stuff like that because eventually you're going to end up with a bad keloid yeah. in your ears. And please come to a professional and don't just go to somebody who can cut it off because nine times out of ten it's going to grow back and it's going to come back bigger than before. Speaking of doing things from your cousin and your Grammy, who trying to, <laughs> um, you you ever heard they say when you have moles on your neck and your face, you get a, a string and you tie it and say the moles drop off. Is uh, that true? First of all, and yeah, is, are there any risks? To what that? you're doing is what you're doing is strangulating it. You're, you're tying off the blood supply so that the mole dies. Mm-hmm. Okay, anything. I mean, you tie a string tighter on your finger, it's gonna turn black and mm-hmm. it's gonna die. Mm-hmm. So anything you tie a string around, you're going to shut down the blood supply and that thing will die. Mm -hmm. The problem with doing that is that you create so much scarring Mm. and an unfriendly environment that you you tend to have a little red scar where the mole was and people still don't like that. So I'd much prefer to see you and we do a very simple procedure to get the mole off. Um, We have multiple options and and to avoid adverse scarring, mm-hmm. I'd recommend that you see a professional. Not necessarily me, but there's lots of good dermatologists and mm-hmm. lots of good people who can take care of moles properly. But don't don't tie stuff around. Don't them. don't tie. That's it. Listen, don't. <laughs> I mean, I love Grammy. Thank God for Grammy. But you know, Grammy only doing what she thinks is best. But my professional doctor, Doctor Gregory Neal, said, "Come to it. Uh, it doesn't even have to be him. Mm-hmm. Go to a dermatologist. Go to a professional." Yeah. To get those things um, done with or get rid of those things, because I don't know. So, Dr. Neil, let's let's talk. If let's say, for instance, someone had an accident at home, um, they may have you know cutting up some stuff and they accidentally cut off their finger, or uh, you know, they. No, I've heard someone who was mowing the lawn before, and the the lawn mower went over their toe. Mm-hmm. That has happened. Yeah. Um, what would you recommend that they do to try to salvage that part until they get to an ER? If you're close, 
Just just pick it up and bring it straight into the hospital. Don't, don't put do it in anything. ice or anything don't, like don't, that? Don't, no, don't do that. It makes you watch too much movies. No, don't put it in ice. The, the reason is the, the body and the cells in the body, even though, yes, we are 70% water, mm-hmm. but... We are 70% water mixed with a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And there's something, something called a pH balance that, that's a very narrow range in our body. And if you go outside of that pH balance by putting, putting it in ice, which melts into water, right. you, the cells swell and burst and die. Ooh. So no water. If you have access to a clinic next door, that can um, put the part in a saline soaked gauze, Mm -hmm. sterile saline, and into the gauze and then put that into plastic, into a plastic bag or something, Mm -hmm. or into a container, even a Tupperware container. You can put that on a bed of ice. Mm -hmm. So it's not directly on the ice. Okay. Understand? if you wish, you can put the dry thing that got cut off into a container and put that on ice, but not directly, directly on, on ice. ice. Not directly on ice, okay. not directly into cold water. So anything to do with um, mm-hmm. accidents, with slicing or anything, just don't put it directly on ice, put it in a container on top of the ice, go to the ER Correct. as soon as possible. Correct. All right, so we, we're wrapping up, sir, but I just wanted to find out one thing. This is for my ladies. My ladies want to find this out, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Do men come to you for surgery about their genitals? Can can surgery be done on their genitals? It's interesting that you ask that. <clears throat> we, as part of my training, we had a genital reconstruction mm-hmm. clinic. Mm-hmm which was not a common thing in plastic surgery programs. Mm-hmm. It was one of three in the whole United States. And with the reason we had it was because we had a very, very um, advanced plastic surgeon named Horton, mm-hmm. who was one of the grandfathers of plastic surgery. Mm-hmm. And his son was a urologist. Mm-hmm. So, so that combination, because the, the urologist's son would see problems and refer it to his dad, dad. Mm-hmm. Um, who had now the entire um, force of the, the plastic surgery community behind him. Mm-hmm. In Virginia, we had 26 plastic surgeons in Richmond alone. Wow. And um, our clinic dealt with things like when, when the penis has a bend in it. Right. Um, bend to the side, bend up, bend down. Um, stuff that was mentioned before, hypospadias, where mm-hmm. the, the tube that carries urine to the tip of the penis doesn't make it all the way to the tip. Mm-hmm. And so urine comes out before it gets to the tip. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, cancer. Mm-hmm. We did penile reconstruction, utilizing something called a free flap, where we take body parts and... Um, we call them spear parts, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> that God put there for the plastic mm-hmm. surgeon to, to recreate uh, what we call a neophallus, which is actually a, a penis. Mm-hmm. So it's something that looks very much like a penis, but is made from body parts. Mm-hmm. So, so yes, we, we do stuff like that. Um, it's not the majority of stuff that we do. But we do address it's stuff possible. like that. So yeah. this is more reconstructive. It is definitely reconstructive. But a very interesting part of the reconstructive armamentarium as well. Right. Very interesting. What about cosmetic? No, I, I don't really do it. Uh, there's a way to do fat injection to make it fatter. Mm-hmm. There's a way to um, extend it by going in and releasing ligaments and bringing them out and stitching it in a different place. There are some very delicate nerves and vessels there, so you're you're really in tiger That's country. A risk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there is some risk mm-hmm. involved, and so I don't recommend taking that risk mm-hmm. because uh, it's really not necessary. But do do men do that? The cosmetic park. Put it that. Put it this way. Not with me. Not with you. Okay, but <laughs> right. it, it, yeah. Okay, let me leave yeah. that there because we we want to know. This is a real show. We are we have women listening. We want to know. Do they do stuff like how we do stuff with our stuff? You know, um, 
you know, that that's a serious question. And I know that we're going to have some people like, oh, my God, did she actually ask that? Yes, I did ask that because that's we want to be as real as possible. If, if you think it, then why not ask it? Absolutely. All right. So my final question to you, and you could just give me a ballpark as to what, it, uh, if you're able to, the like cost, if you were to get something like the the regular things that we ask for, the the um breast lift or right. the you know range you don't have to give me the exact figure right. what right. are some of the range in costs there, there's three costs that you have to um anticipate if you're going to have a cosmetic surgery mm-hmm. some procedures are done under local anesthesia with a little sedation like mm-hmm. how we were talking about the, the eyelid lift and right. the forehead lift and the face lift neck lift those don't require full anesthesia often, mm-hmm. you know, so we can do those at reduced cost mm-hmm. because the anesthetic drugs and the equipment and everything like that is what costs a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um, many other procedures we do are done under local anesthetic, which is just a little injection like Novocaine that the dentists use. Right. Um, the Botox and the injectable fillers are are just a tiny bit of local anesthetic. The laser hair removal mm-hmm. that we do is just a t- uh, rub-on anesthetic. Mm-hmm. We rub it on, leave it on 20 minutes, and then you get your laser hair removal, um, chin, upper lip, bikini line, underarm, legs, arms, uh, which is laser hair removal is a huge part of what the... Um, we have two techs mm-hmm. who are doctors mm-hmm. who, have, who are experts in laser hair removal. I also am an expert in laser hair removal, but I don't do it that much right. anymore. Right. You know? um, so how much it costs depends on what you're going to have done. Right. Do you need anesthesia? Um, do you need to have uh, a lot of equipment? Is it equipment intensive? You know, Generally speaking... We generally beat Miami prices. Mm. Generally beat Miami prices. And the reason is because you don't have to travel. You don't have to stay in a hotel. You don't have to rent a car. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. Not, only we, not only do we do that, but what you can expect to communicate with us efficiently and well and have a good idea what's going on. Then you have your family support. So you you you're not going to have that high complication rate that we see coming okay. out of some of these foreign countries. Mm-hmm. And follow up too, mm-hmm. just, just a hop, skip and jump in. right to you. It's built mm-hmm. in. It's mm-hmm. built in. When you mm-hmm. when you pay me a fee, it is automatically understood that, that you are you can see me for up to a year or more after your procedure. Mm-hmm. You understand? To follow up and make sure everything is okay. I love that. I love that. I love that. And before we close now, I'm going to ask you to speak. Is there anything that you would want to tell our listening audience? Anything anything that you've spoke about today um, or any advice that you'd want to give to our ladies? I want to say something. Mm-hmm. I want to say that I have learned so much in this business from our population here. And, and you know, the people that, that come into my office are articulate. They do the research they're health conscious and they make my job so easy so That's thank funny. you Bahamas <laughs> thank you there very you much listen, listen he's modest he has bedside manners I can't ask for any <laughs> <laughs> doctor like this doc I need to find something to come to you for yes my tummy talk I come in for the tummy talk okay just letting you know now what is the um Recovery time, if I do come to get a tummy tuck done. When, when you're ready for surgery, recover quickly. Mm-hmm. You recover very quickly. Uh, we, do, we do tummy tucks in a very special way where uh, as we pull that tissue down, mm-hmm. we tack it underneath in multiple places so that there's, there's not much potential for fluid to collect. Mm-hmm. That avoids one of the possible complications. Understand? You do have to stay bent over for a good time. Two two and a half weeks. Bend over. Bend over, yeah. You can't you can't straighten up right after surgery. Ooh, I, how how am I supposed? To, well, I sleep in a fetal position, so that's fine. Well, you have to understand the way plastic surgeons get very very fine line scars is by avoiding tension. Mm. So if you stretch my scar, it's going to be a wide scar, yes. and I don't want you to stretch my scar. So we have you bent over a little bit 
which is why it's important to have your sister, your mommy, your church sister, your auntie, your husband, your boyfriend support, support mm-hmm. you. Um, just help you move around for the first couple of days. So um, what is recovery time roughly? You're going to be driving in about two and a half weeks or oh, three weeks. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, if you're ready for surgery. Yeah. Yeah. That's not bad at all. Mm-hmm. So, and then the, the um, you know, when we were able to see the actual results, like after all the scar tissue and everything right. is out there. By about six weeks, mm-hmm. you're going to be standing straight and tall. When, when you, you do this, I can tell you put some little abs in there for me too, please. <laughs> That's what we do. You we, do that for true? We, we I was joking. We, we call okay. it, yeah, we call it etching. We call we enhance the tender knots in scriptures. Oh. We call it etching. Listen, so you, y'all so need to stop letting these people be lazy. Y'all got to do y'all <laughs> sit-ups and push-ups and stuff, man. Yeah, we're, we're right there, so uh-huh. why, not? Yeah, uh-huh. why not? Awesome. Listen, this is the moment where I want to talk to my audience and challenge us. I love this part because this is the part where... I get to share my opinion and my views and I try to uplift as much as I can. And one of the things that I wanted to say is that let's love ourselves, you know, no matter what. Um, That has been my plea since the beginning of this series. Our inner beauty and and our inner self and our self-care is so important. And it's okay to have the exterior fixed and like like Doc says, you put the cherry on the top because you're already beautiful. As women, we are already beautiful beings and creatures. You understand? So it's okay that it's done. But it's just that let's just make sure that our inner beauty and disposition is also taken care of. That's important. Um, There are women who've done plastic surgery and and still still having man problems. You know? (laughs) I gotta go there, Doc. Um, Because it hasn't changed their self-esteem issues. So they they have the nose done and the cheeks done and the lips done and then they're still, they still have a bad attitude. Well, healthy and healthy and self-confident is the new beauty, you know. Okay, that's the new beauty. That's the new beauty. Healthy and self-confident. That's the, the new beauty. That that's what we have to do. Understand that self-confidence is important. Now, there's a difference between having self-confidence and being cocky. Difference. Okay, you got it. Um, so we ain't trying to be there. We trying to have our esteem. We trying to have our confidence when we know that we are beautiful, no matter what. Whether we go to Doctor Neil or we decide just to just let it run. You know, we are beautiful, and I want you to know that you are beautiful. Don't think that getting cosmetic surgery is going to wipe away your problems. It's not exactly. going to, exactly. you know. Um, there are people who have spent thousands of dollars, I'm sure, to improve themselves because they don't think that they are beautiful enough. I don't know if you've ever encountered any, but I've heard and read books about magazines, articles about women who just who are um, obsessed Mm-hmm. With going to the plastic surgeons and trying to rectify, beautify, whatever that reconstruct their faces, have you encountered any? They, they don't come to me. They I don't, don't see them you. because because um, when we talk to our patients, we tell them what to expect and where it's going to go, and they get good guidance. Um, we we don't have anybody who is lo- who's losing grip on reality. I love all it. people love all people are very very much in tune with reality. I love it. I love it. So please. All right. Now, and I don't I we would want you not to go and enlarge or reduce things on your body just to make him stay or just because he wants to see something bigger or he wants, you know, what I mean, for his pleasure. Um, now, if you want to do this for you, this is different because doing this for you before you even do that. Let me challenge you to ask this question. Why do I want it done? What is the That's reason? A good question. Yeah. You know, and, and then when you ask yourself that question. Answer it so you could actually hear yourself answering it, <laughs> not just in your mind. Like you like, vocally say, "This is the reason why I want to get this done," so you can hear yourself and mm-hmm. see if it makes sense. And like Dr. Neil say, find a support team, support system, so that they can say, "Okay, well, I think X, Y, Z." I mean, not that their opinion matter, but it can help. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, it can yeah. help determine whether or not you're doing this for you because this is something like with me I don't have to get my little flaps done right I don't see anything but, anyway so. talk you always see it you always see it <laughs> but what I'm saying is um, I'm okay with it but if I was giving given an opportunity yeah I'm gonna do it that's because that's something I wanna do alright mm-hmm. it's not because oh I have a low self esteem or oh somebody teased me about it so I'm gonna get it done because I'm tired of some these people teasing me it won't be that reason so determine why you would want to get it done yeah, exactly. absolutely. 
Um, and after you've determined that, you've already answered your question and you know for a fact that this is what you want and you know your purpose and you know that you are beautiful whether you get it done or not, then go ahead, go see Dr. Neil and his <laughs> colleagues and I'm, I guarantee you, especially based on his bedside manners, it's going to be done effect- efficiently and effectively. Now, if you need help, um, if you want to talk to somebody Concerning these matters, if you need a coach um, to talk to you and you may have some issues with self-esteem, you can give me a call or you can email me at coachtrish at yourlanelifecoaching.com. Go to my website, www.yourlanelifecoaching.com. And oh, WhatsApp me, 376-8689. I got to ask Dr. Neil this question. Do you do consultations? We do consultations um, frequently. Right. Um, there, there was a... The other day I had 28 patients, and many of them were follows, so many of them were new consultations. Wow. Yeah. See, mm-hmm. if you need a professional, I would advise you. This is my other challenge. Don't go to Annie Becky and ask her how to get rid of the mole. Don't go to Sister whatever and, and, and get whatever injection she have on her table or whatever cosmetic stuff she have on her table and try to use it. Go to a professional. Seek professional help when dealing with trying to reconstruct or enhance or beautify or enhance your beauty because you're already beautiful, um, seek professional help, all right? Because it doesn't make sense. You try to be, I don't want to use the term cheap, um, frugal. Can I use that? <laughs> That's the best. I'm trying to say it politely. And you're trying, to, you're trying to save costs by doing something that at the end of the day is going to cost you going back to the professionals anyway and having to spend more money to try to, to redo what you have done, what you exactly. could have avoided. That's exactly. Yeah. Today's show was brought to you by Johnson & Johnson, distributed by Lowe's Wholesale, Airborne Freight and Cargo Services, John's Shoe Store and Accessories, Family Medicine Center, Skin Solutions Day Spa and Salon, and Carrie's Fabric and Uniform Store. Before we go, we want to ask Dr. Neil to tell us how can we reach you if we want further information or consultation. I'm... I'm uh I'm on the net, on the website. Um, I'm on Google Maps, Bahamas Plastic Surgery. When you when you pull up Google Maps, the number is 356-3189, And, um, you know, we have WhatsApp as well. Mm-hmm. So you can call the office. One of the beautiful ladies at the front desk mm-hmm. will answer, and you can set up something. Uh, they're very knowledgeable as well. Sometimes you can run a couple of questions by them, but... They'll help to figure out what you need and put you in at the right time. They are so friendly. Yeah. I um I spoke with Raquel. I think that's her name. Yeah. Oh, she's just marvelous, professional. I love her. Then there's Terry, and then Mrs. Neal, yeah. your yeah. wife. She, oh she's my she's gosh, tell her a million thanks. She's just <laughs> phenomenal. I love her. Oh, she's amazing. Man, amazing. listen, I feel like I have family there already. I've never mm-hmm. seen them, but I've spoken to them um as the weeks went on, trying to get Dr. Neal in, which was of course no problem at all. Thank you so much for your time. You are most Thank welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I love the fact you were able to share your information and your knowledge to us as listeners. I learned so much today. I learned a lot. And um, I know for a fact that it's going to impact this country phenomenally. Well, it certainly has been a pleasure interacting with you. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, next week's show, we're going to have an audiologist, a dentist, and an optometrist. Oh, my! Three doctors in the same (laughs) building. Okay, we have to make sure, ladies, that our hygiene is on point. These doctors were so excited when I asked them to come onto the show. I can't wait. So tune in next week, Sunday, and come with your questions. We have lots of prizes and lots of giveaways. And so I want to thank my listening audience. Thank you to my Facebook first-time listeners. Listeners. Thank you so much. I pray that you were all empowered, educated, and encouraged today. Until next time, have a blessed evening, everyone. Bye-bye.